together in peace. Peace, 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 peace. Join together, together in peace. Peace, 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 peace. Join together, together in peace. do the virtual hug. Hmm. Good morning. There was a little boy who was trying to learn how to tie his shoes and of course he's working with his mother or his mother and his dad. Finally he got it down. He knew how to tie his shoes and uh, the next day his mom hears the little boy crying in his room and she goes into the bedroom and says what's wrong? And he's just finishing tying his shoes and says, I just realized I have to do this for the rest of my life. Have you ever had that uh, overwhelmed <laughs> feeling <laughs> and felt that way? Um, sometimes life can be a little overwhelming, especially when, uh, you know, when we're dealing with um, uncharted territory. I mean, wow. Um, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. And I know for me, um, I've learned through personality tests and stuff like that that ministers go through that I have a strategic mind. So if somebody lobs a situation in to me, I'm usually quiet about it, and my mind is just going off, you know, on all of the uh, various scenarios and gaming out all of the situations. And, and then, of course, over the years, I've discovered, uh, you know, unity and just realized that I also need to open to divine guidance, like we talked about in the Daily Word. So, um, sometimes, you know, these projects can take quite a bit of time. I know when I was in ministerial school, one of our classmates, Craig Bifley, we were talking about, you know, that sense of feeling overwhelmed. And he said, well, you look at a salami. He says, the, you realize there's no way I can eat the salami today, but if I just take it slice by slice, eventually I'll eat the salami. <laughs> so this morning, let's talk about those moments when we feel overwhelmed. Let's talk about those moments when we have doubt something will unfold the way we want it to. In the Gospel of Mark, 9th chapter, 24th verse, there's an epileptic boy, and the, the disciples are trying to heal him, and then Jesus comes, and, the, and Jesus asks the boy's father, do you believe he can be healed? And the, and the father says, yes, Lord, I believe, but what about my unbelief? And, uh, you know, just where does my, you know, that sense of, do I need to be 100% sure? Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, once said that he, when faced with the decision, once he's 51% sure, he proceeds. Because if he would wait until he is 100% sure about every decision, nothing would get done. It is normal for us to, especially if you get a strategic mind, think about, okay, yes, this is the way it's going to happen, but what if? So, it's always wise to have help, uh, both human and divine. Let's talk about that human side. You know, it's nice to have a prayer partner, sponsors. Uh, if, you, if you don't have one, think about that a little bit. Um, you know, do, is there someone you could call every day and just spend, you know, like three minutes on the phone praying together or uh, just unloading? I know a lot of us have, uh, you know, rediscovered our families <laughs> since we're living with them every day, all day. Um, and I know, um, well, let, let me jump into a story. You know, as you see, the, the title today is Befriending Lions. 
and there's you know been this storyline you know of course you got in the bible we've got the book of david where david's in the lion's den and is unharmed and then there's the androcles you know story which i'm going to tackle here in a moment and, and it's even in our modern folklore you know for those of you who didn't a few years ago see the movie how to train your dragon you know, it's a wonderful movie it's animated but uh, check that one out but the story you know traces back to the second century androcles is a slave he escapes and as he's trying to find a place to hide, he goes into a cave and uh, starts to catch his breath. And all of a sudden, he realizes there's a lion in here. Uh, but the lion, rather than being fierce, is whimpering. And uh, he discovers as his eyes get used to the dark that, that this lion has got a thorn in its paw. So he extracts the thorn and bandages it, and the lion is so grateful that, you know, it's a, <laughs> instead of having a lion in the cave, you it was like having your having a loyal dog. I mean, this lion just, uh, you know, just loved Androcles. Uh, one day, Androcles was out kind of foraging for food, and he gets captured and brought to the to the place where he's judged as being an escaped slave, and there's the death penalty. And so they go to apply the death penalty and they throw him into the Colosseum where he used to be eaten by a lion. Okay, you're way ahead of me here, right? Yeah, the, the lion that is released into the Colosseum, there is the lion that befriended, befriended Androcles before. So, And the people are just amazed because the lion comes up to him and, and uh, you know, and he's completely tame and then uh, with... The people just astounded and astonished by what they're seeing. You know, the king decides that there must be some some blessing that this man has, so he releases him and says, you know, that he's free now. He doesn't need to be a slave anymore. So you think about the symbolism in the story, though. I mean, we each have those situations where it would be, it seems scary. You know, you're confronted by a lion, but when you're willing to empathize with the lion you can help the fear dissipate the thorn is removed your how many lions have you faced in your life you know how many thorns have you extracted not only from yourself but from others have you built goodwill so that when the day comes that you're in an arena with the lion that the lion will treat you well we, um, I know in unity there's this concept of being prayed up. You know, the idea that each day we meditate, we pray. We build our consciousness. We rise to a new level of awareness that we're a spiritual being having a human experience so that when challenges come into our life, they don't knock us off our feet like they did maybe earlier in our lives. And it's amazing what happens <coughs> when... Aspects of nature come together. Uh, like, for example, you know, a seed can form a tree, but it takes a lot of trees to make a forest. Uh, one drop of water seems insignificant until it joins with other drops of water into a stream, into a river, and then pouring into the ocean. And then, of course, the ocean evaporates, sends the clouds over the land, and rains once again. This amazing cycle of irrigation. If we're feeling overwhelmed, it's because of our perspective. We can make our journey through life by just taking it one step at a time. <clears throat> we might not have any clue as to how we're going to achieve this situation or to overcome this situation, but we are often guided as to what is the next step to take. And so if we take that step, we have a difference in perspective. <clears throat> Once I get 20, 30 steps down the road and make the way around the bend, I'm seeing things that I didn't see before. And, s and so often it seems like the important part of any achievement isn't the destination, but it's the journey. So we're not called upon to live a whole year in one day. Take it one step at a time. Our highest as aspirations can be reached by being willing to work together. I am... Um, a lot of you guys are familiar with Joseph Campbell. He uh, actually passed away now, good, you know, uh, 1988. 
So he was a professor of uh, comparative religion and mythology, taught at Sarah Lawrence College. I saw, <laughs> I was listening to one of his recordings of a lecture he gave, and he said, this idea of rugged individualism is crap. We're here to bring out the best in each other. <clears throat> and to think that we can just do it alone is not a very healthy approach to life. You know, even... <laughs> Even the stereotype of the mountain man uh, is in isolation, usually because you know something has happened in his life that he got uh, something unpleasant happened to him. I guess is the best way to put it. <clears throat> so, if we recognize that there's a difference between being dependent and being interdependent, you know, we can work together, empower each other. That's what we're here for. I need you. Yeah, I admit it, and I and I love you. I love being with you, and I hope you feel the same. It's important for us to be here together because each of us has self doubt. You know, we start to wondering, oh, you know, is it, uh, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Etc. And I don't know about you, but it's much easier for me to see the divine in another person. It's much easier for me to be encouraging to another person than it is for me to do that to myself. That's the human part of the help that we need. Now, let's talk about the divine aspect of that. <clears throat> Being willing to open up our minds to the divine mind and to get that divine download. These divine ideas that come to us and we can filter them through our intuition and we know what it is that we need to do, which of those ideas we need to run forward with. <clears throat> we can tear down walls that we've built inside of ourselves, partitions to think that we think protects ourselves from, uh, from unpleasant experiences that we've had in the past, but in reality may stand in the way of us moving forward. <coughs> every moment of every day, divine guidance is there. Here, it's there, it's everywhere that you are. It's a loving, nurturing presence, a voice, an intuitive feeling, you know. So, so what's your challenge? You know, metaphorically, what's your mountain to climb? What's your river to cross? Do you need to jump across a wide ravine? By going within, we get the divine guidance I was just talking about. But I don't know about you, a lot of times when I am getting that guidance or I put a question out there, the answer actually comes through other human beings. You know, I'll put out maybe the question in my mind like, gee, I wonder whatever happened to old so-and-so, and then suddenly the information is there. <laughs> or, you know, I'll start thinking, well, I wonder how this would happen, or I wonder who's handling this, and sure enough, you know, I'll hear a newscast or something like that, and it's... The answer is there through other people. That's because, of course, we're all expressions of God, and that's how we can get the guidance that we need. So <clears throat> let's uh, take a look at a Bible story. The book of Joshua, sixth chapter, starting with the first verse. There is that, you, you, if, even if you don't know the Bible that well, you may have heard about you know, the walls of Jericho falling down. So this is the story about this. Now, in unity, we recognize that these narrative stories have symbolism within them. And we can turn to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and see what it means uh, that Jericho is there, or Joshua is the person that's doing it. Now, Joshua, a lot of people in the English-speaking world who haven't been to a seminary don't know that Joshua is the same as Jesus or Jesus. The original, of course, Old Testament, or the Hebrew scriptures as we now call it, was written in Hebrew. And then the New Testament was written in Greek because that was the official language of the Roman Empire. And for some reason in the English translation, they took Joshua in the Old Testament, and uh, you know, his, his official name was Joshua, son of Nun. And then you had Joshua, son of Joseph, or Joshua of Nazareth, and they decided to simplify things by using the Greek version of Joshua, which was Jesus or Jesus. So uh, 
probably make a great lesson at some other point. But the uh, the idea is you have this sudden growth in spiritual awareness. Now Joshua is leading his people into the promised land. Moses has gotten them there. Moses dies. Joshua takes them into the promised land. And the first thing they come across is the city of Jericho, which is a fortified city. So let's dive in. Now Jericho was shut up inside and out because of the Israelites. No one came out. No one went in. Kind of... uh, kind of feels like it feels when I'm suddenly facing fear. You know, I want to just kind of hole up inside or cocoon. Yet, I can be receptive to positive words. I can be receptive to new ideas. <clears throat> the Lord said to Joshua, I have handed Jericho over to you already, along with its king and its soldiers. Jericho is the first thing that's encountered in the Promised Land. When we look into the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, and we see it represents intellects that's been hardened. In other words, you know, you're stuck with your ideas, you're stuck with your plan. Um, you know, you'll find yourself saying, well, hey, you know, that's an interesting argument, but don't confuse me with the facts. <laughs> you know, you it's, uh, I know what I think, and I act because I think, and I am right. You know, that, that kind of hard and fast sense of like, yeah, I'm not going to change my mind, even though it's pretty obvious that I do need to change my mind. But there's another layer to the meaning of Jericho, and that is that it's the light that comes from the moon. Now, of course, we know in modern times that light doesn't come from the moon. It's actually reflected by the moon to earth. And as we talked about in the creative process lessons that I did last year, um, the light of the moon actually represents that intuition that comes to us. Yeah, we have the light of the sun, but then there's the, that intuition that suddenly surfaces, and it's a powerful light, even though it's not particularly coming from the intellect. So <clears throat> what is our intellect reflecting? Let's go back to our Bible story here, Joshua 6 chapter. <clears throat> God is talking to Joshua and says, You shall march around the city, all the warriors circling the city once. This you shall do for six days, with seven priests leading the Ark of the Covenant, the priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns. <clears throat> On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. The priests blowing the trumpets, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, as soon as you hear the sound of that trumpet, then all of the people shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city will fall down. And then the people shall charge straight ahead and subdue the city. Now remember that Joshua represents spiritual awareness, and he commands the people, don't shout or let your voice be heard, Don't utter a word until the day I tell you to shout, and then you will shout. And so he takes them through this whole process, these seven days. Now, seven symbolizes, when you come across the the, the number seven, and it's in the Bible a lot, it means that you've gotten to that point where you've completed something at the physical world level. And you're usually exploring your spirituality, and suddenly you've gotten to the point where you can start to manifest things in the physical world. It's the expression of divine law of perfection in the natural human being. There are other traditions, though, the number seven, too, in various spiritual traditions, right? You've got the chakras, you've got uh, Elijah tells Namun to bathe in the Jordan seven times. Uh, You've got the seven churches, the seven candlesticks, seven days of the week, seven dwarfs. I guess that isn't a spiritual tradition, but it is. (laughs) It is a story to be dissected. Now, the tabernacle represents the body. And so you have these seven centers through which we express. And these seven centers that are inside of you, um, no, they're not the chakras. In these old Jewish traditions, we have the five senses, you know, seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and feeling. Those are five, but where the other two or the other two are, intuition and telepathy. We get that guidance through our intuition, and then we have a way of being able to throw this energy out of ourselves, right? We can 
communicate without speaking with other people. We can put out prayers that change you know, our physical environment. These are all areas that need to be developed in the human being. So we've got the seven priests and the seven days and the seven trumpets, seven times around Jericho. Yeah, this <laughs> so many of these Bible stories are just redundant, 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 just to make sure that you get the point. <clears throat> so back to the story. On the seventh day, they rose early at dawn, marched around the city in the same manner seven times. And at the seventh time when the priests had blown their trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you this city. So if the city is indeed this fortress of all of our old thoughts, all of our old belief systems, and we use the spiritual awareness and we use our spoken prayers, our spoken declarations, all of those old walls can come tumbling down. And it reads here, the city and all that is in it shall be now devoted to the Lord. So the people shouted, trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpets, they raised a great shout and the wall fell down. The people charged straight ahead to this, into the city and captured it. Notice there wasn't any cannon fire. There wasn't any physical force against the walls. It just fell down. And then, of course, symbolically, they are able to go in and transform the thoughts, the feelings that we have walled up in our, our side. We're finally willing to let it go. Prayer and meditation, the power of the spoken word through our denials and our affirmations, our ability to just do a prayer of release of what it is that we don't want to see in our lives anymore, and then being able to affirm what it is we do want to see in our lives. We can affirm and pray what we know is the spiritual truth about the situation. So let's take a look at this week's takeaways. I'm going to put up the slide there. I actually posted this, of course, on the Facebook page that you're watching. <clears throat> so we live our life one day at a time. And yes, we are interconnected with each other. One of our missions is to bring out the best in each other. We open our minds to the divine mind. Our belief does not need to be 100%, but we do apply our belief. And then we follow our intuition as we get our guidance. Be willing to release our old thoughts and old beliefs that just don't work for us anymore. Ask God to help. Know that like in this book of Joshua 6 chapter, yes, the walls within ourselves can come tumbling down. And finally, appreciate the power of the spoken word. <clears throat> Our closing video is from Steve Hartman of the CBS News. Gabrielle Pierce's graduation got canceled. Her dad, Torrance, was almost as upset as she was. It really just broke my heart, but what do you do? Well, you thought of something. <laughs> I think I did. I said, well, I guess we have to go into the driveway. <laughs> so right there, where they usually park the Chevy. Graduation girl, Torrance graduated his daughter from Xavier University of Louisiana on a rented stage and podium in front of friends, family, and passing motorists. Gabrielle says it was definitely not the graduation she envisioned, but still, everything she dreamed. I think it was better than the regular one. Could you imagine that being possible just a few weeks ago? No, not at all. <laughs> and that's just one of many small miracles we're starting to see across the country. Disappointed graduates discovering pomp and silver linings as schools get creative with banner tributes and parade graduations. Others are planning drive-in graduations and at least one whiz-by graduation. Here in Indianapolis, it's cap and gone. The Speedway hosting a ceremony where kids can cruise the track in their own vehicles, presumably at a reasonable speed, and pick up their diplomas on the way out. It's not the memories they thought they were going to have, but it's something different and unique that they'll probably remember forever. Scott Cumro is a band director at Fergus Falls High School in Minnesota. Here he is playing for his high school's virtual graduation. All 22 parts. 
It took Scott two full days to make this video for his students. And it's educators like him and parents like these who are pulling out all the stops to make this a graduation to remember. And so it's our hope when these graduates look back in hindsight at 2020, they won't dwell on what was lost, but what was found and what was left completely unaffected. Moments like this one. Very proud. A father couldn't be much prouder than I am right now of my daughter, Gabrielle. And there's the only graduation speech that matters. Steve Hartman, CBS News, on the road. <coughs> Our closing Bible verses from the book of Isaiah, 11th chapter, 6th verse. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf, the lion, and the fattened, fattened calf will be together, and the little child shall lead them. May you always be open to God's guidance and grace. Let's prepare for meditation. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. When I pray, feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Let's feel our hearts go deeper. If you haven't already, just take a nice deep breath and relax. Be still. Go within. Draw your focus from your head down to the very center of your torso. The gateway of chi that is the center of the spiritual being having the human experience. <clears throat> Allow any illusion of separation between ourselves and God to just melt away. We are open and receptive to God's living spirit of truth. And in unity in all of our meditation and prayer times, we take a moment to pray for others. We include any prayer requests that have been received here at Unity of Tampa this week. Bring to mind any individuals, families, groups, organizations, or situations you'd like to pray for. And let's see and know that the divine perfection and the divine substance is in and expressing through each of these prayer requests as their highest good. Today and every day hereafter. Let us see unity of Tampa thriving in consciousness, people, and revenues. And I invite you to take the words I'm about to speak as your own prayer words in this meditation this morning. I now release the feelings of limitation or frustration that keeps me from being what I was created to be. My creator believes in me. I cannot be separate from God because I am a part of God. God is everywhere, including in every cell of my body. 
God has given me gifts, passions, and talents to express in this world. Divine guidance shows me where to express these. It is God's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. Not because I've worked hard to earn it, but because the grace of my creator, my God, believes in me. And as I prepare for three minutes of silence, I embrace and express the divine idea of spiritual power in the silence. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I now radiate love to all God's creation and accept love in return. As I move through the coming week, I live life one day at a time. I recognize we are all interconnected. We will bring out the best in each other. I open my mind to divine mind. And I understand the divine ideas I receive. My belief need not be 100%. I follow my intuition. I am willing to release old thoughts and old beliefs that don't work for me anymore. 
I remember to ask God for help. I remember the lesson of Joshua chapter 6, that the walls can fall down. And I appreciate the power of my spoken word. For my ever-growing awareness of the omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence of God, I am grateful. I pray these things in the name and the nature and the power that we know as Jesus Christ. And I now release this prayer into the spiritual realm where perfect results are unfolding. And as we draw our focus back to the sanctuary, let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 